I've spent years exploring data privacy and security, and I've tested just about every two-factor authentication app out there. Today, I'm ranking the most popular ones, the worst and the best, based on how well they protect your privacy from my personal experience. But before we get into this list, I need to make one thing clear. While 2FA is great for account protection, about 95% of your 2FA apps are actually a real privacy risk. Many require your phone number just to get started. And your phone number is a digital gold mine. It rarely changes, it's tied to your bank account, your ID, your social media, everything. So if you don't truly know how an app handles your data, you should assume it could be exploited. In the wrong hands, that number can be used by data brokers, corporations, governments, and hackers to connect dots through leaked breach databases and build an entire profile on you. And it doesn't stop there. Some 2FA apps don't even use proper encryption. Others rely on proprietary tech that you can't audit and you're just expected to trust them. And with that in mind, let's explore one after the other. We start with Google Authenticator, and this one has been historically criticized for a lack of backup options. This forced users to manually manage TOTP seeds, which can be a privacy win, but a usability risk. In 2023, Google added encrypted cloud sync via Google accounts. And this introduces some data collection within Google's ecosystem, potentially tying 2FA data to user profiles. It's not open source, which limits transparency, and its reliance on the Google infrastructure raises real privacy concerns. I would have considered leaving this in the seat here, but what news it is that you don't get end-to-end -end encryption. So this one, at best, is a D tier for me. Next, we go to OT, which is owned by Twilio. It offers robust cross-platform sync and encrypted backups. These are convenient, but it requires a phone number and account, raising privacy concerns. It's closed source and recent moves like Trilo ending desktop app support and recommending disabling code syncing due to potential cloning risk highlight vulnerabilities. While it uses zero knowledge encryption for TOTP seeds, the reliance on Twilio servers and lack of open source transparency keep it from A tier. B tier fits as it's functional, but cloud reliant and less transparent than open source options. Now we move on to Microsoft Authenticator and once again, this one is closed source. It's tied to the Microsoft ecosystem and offers an optional cloud sync that stores encrypted TOTP secrets under Microsoft's control. Now this raises concerns about data access. It also can require a Microsoft account for full functionality and its integration with enterprise services may require some telemetry. However, it offers biometric protection and doesn't enforce account creation for basic 2FA, which could be a plus. Compared to Google Authenticator, it has similar privacy trade-offs. There is no transparency, there is no offline first focus. So once again, I'll be dropping this one in the D tier. Now we move on to 2FAS and this one is open source. It collects minimal data and it doesn't require an account for core functionality. So it seems privacy respecting. It supports offline use, has a friendly user interface and offers encrypted backups with iCloud sync in development. Its browser extension also enhances usability. The only reason it might not hit STA is the optional cloud sync whenever it becomes available. Because this could introduce minor risks, but its transparency and a lack of a mandatory account creation make it a top contender. So I'll be dropping this one in the A tier. Okay, let's move over to LastPass Authenticator. This one is closed source and it's tightly integrated with the LastPass password manager ecosystem. It requires an account for backup and for full functionality. Now, last past history with security breaches raises real security concerns. And its cloud-reliant backup system stores encrypted TOTP seeds on LastPass servers. This isn't ideal for privacy. It's functional for LastPass users if you still do that, but lacks any kind of transparency and standalone appeal. This one is perfectly fitting for a DTA. I wouldn't even touch it. 
Let's move on to one that I really expect, AG's Authenticator. It's open source, Android only, and prioritizes local storage with no cloud sync by default. It supports encrypted backups, biometric or PIN protection, and imports from other apps, offering control without vendor lock-in. Its lack of multi-device sync is a deliberate privacy choice, not a flaw, and it's reliable and customizable. It's the perfect fit for STA due to its transparency, offline-first approach, and its community-driven development. Just before we go to the next, remember you could support the channel by joining our membership. I would include a link in the pinned comment. If you're kind enough to join, you'll be supporting our channel, ensuring we don't take sponsorships, and continue bringing you unbiased video content. Okay, let's move on to Rival OTP. I really used to love this one. It was a strong contender, but its acquisition by Mobim raises privacy concerns. And that's because Mobim's reputation and data practices are unclear. It's iOS only, open source, and supports encrypted zip exports with QR codes. However, I really can't move past this acquisition. And without clear transparency on Mobim's handling of data, it's safer to call this one BTA, as it may rely on cloud backups, iCloud sync, and lacks the proven track record of AGs or even 2FAS. Duo Mobile, now part of Cisco, is designed for enterprise use, with features like push notifications, device health checks, and location-based authentication, which can involve significant telemetry. It's closed source and cloud reliant, collecting more data than privacy focused apps. But it's not inherently sketchy in the sense of unverified developers or ad tech. Its enterprise focus and integration with identity management systems make it trustworthy in the corporate context. But its data collection and lack of transparency keep it out of higher tiers. This one is a C tier option for me. Now let's move over to Free OTP Plus. This one is a fork of the Free OTP Authenticator. It's open source, lightweight, offline first, with no cloud sync or account requirements. This makes it a strong S tier contender. It supports TOTP and HOTP, but lacks features like backup or multi device sync, which aligns with privacy but limits usability. The caveat here is its lack of recent updates. These could pose long-term security risk if not maintained. And for me, that's why it misses the S tier and I would be dropping it with the A tier. Okay, let's talk about 1Password. Now, 1Password's TOTP integration is a part of its password manager, not a standalone application. It's closed source with encrypted sync across devices. This convenience comes at the cost of requiring an account and relying on one password servers, though data is end to end encrypted. It's great for users already in the one password ecosystem, but combining 2FA with passwords in one app raises all eggs in one basket concerns. I'm caught between C and B on this one, but I'll err on the side of caution and drop it in the C tier. Now let's move over to Yubico Authenticator. This one stores TOTP seeds in your YubiKey, not your phone. But that means that your codes can be stolen without the physical key. This is a massive step up from typical app-based 2FA authenticators. It's offline, open source on the client side, and works across platforms with no cloud syncing, no accounts, and no tracking. It's just fast, secure code generation when the key is plugged in or tapped via NFC. Yes, you need to buy a YubiKey, but for top tier protection, it's worth it. I'll be dropping this one also in the S tier. Lastly, we have AND OTP, and just like the name implies, this one is for Android systems. It's offline face with encrypted backup options. It supports TOTP and HOTP. It has a simple UI and it allows exports without cloud reliance. While its development has seriously slowed, I, I believe the last update was in 2020, folks like OTP client keep it relevant. Its lack of mandatory accounts or telemetry keep it well aligned with STA and its feature set matches or eclipses free OTP plus. 
but I'll be dropping it in the eighth year because of the stalled development, even though active folks mitigate this. And there you have it. Personally, I'll stick to S tier or at worst an A tier. Anything lower than that is simply too much of a privacy risk for me. Now the question is, how would you rate the two FA apps in this video? If you've had experience with any of them, good or bad, drop your comments below. Also, what other tier list would you want me to do? Please let me know in the comments as well. And of course, if this is your first time on this channel, make sure to subscribe, like and share this video. And if you can, if you're that generous, please join our membership so that you support what we do here. Till the next one, stay safe out there.